to welcome everybody back from lunch, uh, those of you who've made it back, uh, for the second part of today's program. And it's my pleasure. We have a slight change in the structure of the afternoon. Unfortunately, uh, President Botstein uh, was unable to come today. So we have uh, in his stead uh, our colleague and friend uh, and very eminent uh, scholar Norton Batkin, who is Vice President and Dean of Graduate Studies at Bard College, um, Professor of Philosophy and Art History, uh, and the director and founder, really, of the Center for Curatorial Studies uh, at Bard College, which began at more or less the same time as the Bard Graduate Center. He has an undergraduate degree uh, from Stanford, MA and PhD from Harvard University, was a professor at Yale in the philosophy department before coming to Bard College. Uh, and he has written on Wittgenstein and on uh, art and philosophy, in particular uh, the book Photography and Philosophy, published in 1990. And so it's a great pleasure of mine to invite Professor Batkin to the podium. Good afternoon. I'm pleased to welcome you on Bard's behalf to the symposium celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Bard Graduate Center and its distinguished exhibition graduate study and research programs. When I arrived at Bard College in 1991, its reputation remained that of a progressive liberal arts college with a larger than usual studio and performing arts division and two low residency graduate programs created a decade earlier. The Bard Graduate Center was one of the first satellite programs created in the early 1990s to expand the college's intellectual and research resources by adding full-time, innovative, often interdisciplinary graduate degree programs with separate faculties, specialized research libraries, advanced exhibition and performance facilities, and active engagements with intellectual and professional communities in fields outside those in the undergraduate college. Over the past 20 years, the Bard Graduate Center has become one of the most ambitious, successful, and visible centers for graduate study and research in its field, nationally and internationally. The center's institutional collaborations with the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Museum of Natural History, and the New York Historical Society, its lecture series and symposia, its journal West 86 and its monograph series in cultural histories of the material world, its focus gallery exhibitions, and its digital media lab are undoubtedly the envy of much larger university departments and research institutes. The wonder is that so much of what now defines the center's graduate and research programs, as Susan Weber noted this morning, has been created in the last 10 years under the guidance of Peter Miller, who envisioned and led the expansion of the center's mission and its research facilities and activities. All the achievements I've listed above have also strengthened the center's degree programs, adding new faculty in anthropology, Islamic studies, and museum studies, bringing new digital innovations and curatorial opportunities to the curriculum, and broadening exchange between the center's faculty and students and an international intellectual community of curators scholars, and conservators. The Bard Graduate Center has become a singular and exemplary model of new ways that research and teaching might inform and enliven each other. The graduate programs at the Bard Graduate Center, as at other universities, are a proving ground for new faculty research. Allied with the center's research activities, they also have the potential to become a seedbed of new ideas, improve formulations, and future research. The center's graduate curriculum is itself a materialization of the center's intellectual and research agenda and a forum in which new attempts to define and study material culture can be explored with the next generation of scholars and professionals. Bard College and the Bard Graduate Center are now exploring new programs that will offer upper division and graduate level seminars in the decorative arts and material culture at the college and will allow Bard undergraduates in anthropology, art history, and cultural studies 
upon completing their third year of undergraduate study to begin full-time graduate study at the Bard Graduate Center. These exchanges, I anticipate, like the Bard Graduate Center's ambitious research programs, will be a model to other institutions of how talented young students and scholars can be taught and inspired to engage in a field of study that cuts across so many disciplines and such a broad swath of cultural expressions. I congratulate the Bard Graduate Center on its 20th anniversary, and I look forward to the discussions this afternoon.